Today on Influence Interviews, I have a fantastic guest with a lifetime of experience in the dental industry. Nancy Clark Crossan is the founder of the groundbreaking company DIY Digital Consulting, a consulting experience redesigned for today's dental world. I have asked Nancy to come today to share more about this incredible program and how it can help you and your dental practice. Thank you for joining me. Nancy, tell us more. Well, Laura, thank you for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today. So to, to give you an overview, the genesis of my program happened years ago with another company that I owned. And what I did was I had created eBooks of every system, every protocol, detailed, itemized, line by line systems. So that's what I had done. And when I went into dental practices, that's what I bought in. When I did private consulting, I bought in my eBooks and the dentists loved them. They said, this is just what we need. We need systems and protocols. So take you whatever, five years, five years beyond that initial point. Um, I, I met, uh, well, I know Linda Miles, but Linda Miles uh, read all the eBooks, read my new program, DIY, and said, Nancy, this is the best thing since sliced bread. I love it. And lucky for us, she became the DIY digital dental consulting advisor. So that is the bigger picture. And to break it down a little bit, why it even started 10 years ago is because dentists would talk to me all the time. They, they, they have complaints, they have problems in their office. I am solution oriented. So when they would tell me their problems, I would go ahead and say, well, did you think of this? Do you have this? Do you have that? I love that. And they said, no. And I said, have you thought of hiring a consultant? And they said, well, you know, I have to be honest. Sometimes we've heard bad things. Sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, the cost sometimes is prohibitive. Right. And ultimately, who will I pass that cost on to? And that would be my patients. So I need to justify that. And in today's world, Laura, for a large practice, a consultant can be anywhere from forty to $75,000. And in today's world, and I totally agree with a very large practice, you really need a couple of years. You need a couple of years to get everybody on board and everyone trained and everyone agreeing to the process. So yeah, don't you think that a lot of people think that, wow, that sounds like too much time. You know, how, how do I, how do I put a couple absolutely. of your focus on, on this? Absolutely. But you know, the truth is consultants come in, not everybody. I can only speak for what I know mm -hmm. uh, is they they'll come into a practice and they'll do a two or three day observation. They have dinner with the dentist. They already have their program and then they customize it a bit for the practice that they're in and they leave them with a 30, 60, 90 day um, book of what to do and how to do it. So to be clear, I think on site, face-to-face -face consulting is the very best. But because so many dentists don't want to do that, yet they want to improve. They want to take their level to the next practice, to the next, to the next, they want to take their practice to the next level. You got what I mean. Right, I so, got you. So, so um, what they do is they take seminars, they might read books, and they bring in bits and pieces into the practice. And for me, that is a no-no. And here's why, because the team members on a Monday morning, they'll go, oh, she went, to, she went to a seminar this weekend and she's bringing this back. This is what I'd like to do with no plan for implementation, not, no plan at all. And you know what? The team may or may not agree, right? And, and systems, protocols, consulting, practice management, it's really not rocket science. I mean, it just isn't, but the implementation process can feel like it. Yes. So, so uh, maybe they'll implement it, maybe they won't, and then something else comes up and maybe every month the dentist wants to do something different. And that is a recipe for disaster. Yes. So I created a program. It's not bits and pieces. It's from soup to nuts. It starts with a discovery process. It starts with leadership as I don't know what consultant wouldn't start with a leadership process. Then we bring the team on board. And then our program is broken down into um, team calibration, uh, cash flow, unscheduled treatment, um, 
and then we have a new patient experience, but these protocols, and it's very detailed, there may be 25 steps. Then we go into dental assisting section, the, new, the admin section, the hygiene section. We've got a terrific marketing section that before a dentist commits to 5% of their net collections on marketing, there is something they can do that's very powerful in the practice. And it's a three-tier setup. We outline it clearly and then give hundreds of marketing suggestions. And I believe that that is a basic fundamental step that ought to be taken in every practice. Yes, However, yes. Who is going to lead that? The dentist wants to be in the operatory. They want to do treatment. So who will it be? It'll be their practice administrator uh, who can champion the program or someone who's really, really interested. So they have a champion of the program who helps each team lead in every section. And it may sound like I'm saying a lot, but this program, there's a blueprint there's a blueprint for how to, what steps to take. Having said that, the beauty of this is you do it in your own way, in your own time, take what works, leave what doesn't. It's customizable. Yes. It evolves as you evolve. So you have it for a lifetime. And it's a very small price to pay, $19.95, to have a program for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I also consider it to be onboarding training your current team members for what it is you want in your practice. And the depth of this program, the content is very rich. So that's some of the, that's some of the features of this program. And I wrote it to bridge the gap for the dentist who didn't want to hire a consultant, but wanted to improve. And that was done a decade ago. And since then, it's improved. Linda Miles came on board. So if Linda Miles, international speaker, consultant, author of three or four books, if she's on board, you know she took this up quite a few notches. So it's very exciting. And I think it's a great opportunity for dentists who, um, who want another option. And this is it. Yes, absolutely. So that's why I'm in love with the program. I have been digging into it myself. Uh, and I do the leadership and team building component, but I learned so much from it. And you have something that I just absolutely don't have. And I love the idea of being able to share this platform with my clients. Um, you know, you spoke about how disruptive having an outside consultant can be. And even though it is the, the best thing to, if you can afford to do it, to do it that way. But it's like someone doing a DIY on their home. Hiring a general contractor is absolutely the best way to go. They have um, knowledge that you can't possibly put into place, plus they know the flow. So that's why I love your program so much because, okay, if you choose to do it, you're so passionate about it. You don't think anybody else can do it as good as you. And so you take this on. This is such an incre incredible blueprint, like you said, because it does, it gives that person who, who really wants to just own it themselves, that practitioner who who wants to make that effort in the right flow. I love that. Yes, yes. And, and what I suggest when I give directions, by the way, it's all audio too. So anybody can listen to it in their car, on the way to work. And my suggestion and part of the initial direction is for the dentist, take your key people read the program through. It'll take some time, but there's no rush. What I love about this is there really isn't any pressure. However, there may be some pain points that really need to be addressed. I say, take that piece, for instance, cash flow, unscheduled treatment, take that and start to implement it. Read the program through. And if a dentist and a practice administrator or whoever the champion is of this team, if they can say to themselves, you know, 80 to maybe 90% of what's in this program, I really agree with. Mm -hmm. Then they can hand it off to the departments, the sections that pertain to them and say, look, we really agree with this philosophy. We want this, make it better. I'm all about making it better. No ego, take it. It was meant to, it was made, it was written for someone to make it match their own practice philosophy, make it better. And then what they come up with is a really first, a really customized program. 
And so that, okay, was, that's my main thinking about handing something like this off. There is a very good blueprint. Read the directions. Is this, does this program resonate for you? Does most of it resonate for you? And honestly, Laura, I mean, I've been in this field since 1977 and Linda, you know, has read every word of this program. It's going to resonate with most practices. I, I and, believe yeah. that's true. I believe that's true. One of the things that you said too was going through it with your key players. You had said, you know, sometimes they'll go off to a conference or they'll or they'll do some reading and they bring back these, you know, little nuggets in in random order. I do love, you know, getting people on board. I talk about this in my leadership courses, how getting people on your team on board, it takes them understanding what the vision is. So reading through the program, getting them on board with what the big picture is that you're trying to achieve, what is the outcome where even, and, and then how, help having them own it, right? And so that they understand how their um, contribution leads to the outcome you're trying to achieve. It, it definitely brings more commitment from your team to the project. Ownership mentality. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we've been dealing with that. Some of my favorite books, well, old books, 1935, Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People, uh, 80s, that would be Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, The Eighth Habit. I mean, if you don't have the people on board, you will get either overt pushback or worse, covert pushback. So they don't, they're not direct, but they take one or two team members and all of a sudden you've got a problem with three or four team members and push back about something. But it doesn't have to be that way. Right. Because do you like to be told what to do, Laura? <laughs> no, 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 I don't. <laughs> no, no. And most people don't. So this program is, okay, here it is. Make it better. Make it work for you and your unique practice with your unique team. And that is a problem that team members have when a consultant comes in. They say they haven't even sat in my shoes. They haven't been at my desk. Some consultants have never worked in a dental practice right. and they're telling me what to do. And so they feel like, you know what? I don't know. I'm going to, they don't say it out, out, outward. They don't say I'm going to give this person pushback. They just really don't do it. And they don't buy in and buy in is everything. It is everything. E everything. So this is a great program. And when we talk about pain points, I'd like to just say that the, the number one pain point in dentistry today is hiring since COVID. It is huge. When I go into a practice, and this is before COVID, in fact, I wrote this program before COVID. It just so happened that it was the perfect timing. Right. But um, I, I used to do HR, no more. We live in a litigious society uh, and I don't know every state law and I would not do my clients a disservice mm -hmm. by not being an expert. And dentists understand about experts because they use specialists for their patients all the time. But HR is the number one problem. And I think if you have a company, and I don't mention companies, but I certainly, if anyone wants a referral from me, I'm happy to give it. Um, but having an HR company is imperative. And also a side note, we're not talking about this, but having analytics. I mean, you really need to measure. What gets measured improves. And so those are two things to me that completes the big picture of consulting. Almost every consultant will bring in analytics. For me, I have to have an HR company. And then the dentist can focus on this because those areas, the HR that has to be handled, they have to hire the right people. But then this program is onboarding. And it's onboarding forever because they have it for a lifetime. Onboarding, retraining, in our world, I don't know about your world, Laura, but in our world, and I've been in this field since 77, it's trial by fire. Oh, yeah. Just throw somebody in the position. And the person who has to train them, they're so nice, but they're usually annoyed because they have their own full-time functions. And yeah, that's if they're still around. Yeah, of course. I mean, oftentimes, uh, I've, I've been in practices where they've replaced the person Oh. There's no one left to, re to train them. So Absolutely. you kind of have a hodgepodge of training coming from the practitioner and the other staff members that are there. And uh, yeah, so if you have a, a protocol, an onboarding 
uh, training system, a world-class training system that is actually fit for your practice. How amazing is that? Yeah, it's, it's very necessary. Uh, if we don't train our team and tell them what our philosophy is, then they'll do what they've always done. And by the way, some people are fantastic. They bring in great stuff into a practice. They've come from a great practice. They're um, avid readers and they are fantastic, but that's not the case for most people. So if we don't tell them what we expect, then they'll do what they've always done. Mm -hmm. And that usually, honestly, is just not pretty. It causes <laughs> a lot of disharmony because other team members are doing it one way, but without a system, without something to follow, you can't blame team members. I don't. Right. Absolutely. Although I do think there is a lot of that going on. So that kind of comes back to the leadership, not just of the practitioner, but whoever your key players are, that your team having leadership and communication skills is so important because what the, you have to be able to be in a place where you can admit, I don't know how to do this. I have, um, you know, how can you help me and, and be vulnerable enough. And some cultures and some practices don't have that. And so there's a lot of stumbling along. There truly is a, a recipe for disaster and it may not show up right away, but when it does, it's not pretty. It truly isn't. So this we're offering, we're offering an affordable program that can be, you can do it yourself. We do offer support, by the way. That Discovery 2 process is an anonymous survey process. And so we're able to prove to the team that it's anonymous. And then once they feel like they can be honest, mm -hmm. then the answers to a survey like that are very different than an answer to uh, a question that um, that says, well, you know, uh, what what can we do differently? And the team knows they really know what's going on in the practice. That's why sometimes it's so offensive to bring in an outsider. Right. But they will give a different response if they think that there'll be any kind of retribution. If their, um, if their raise is on the line, if their status is on the line. So having an anonymous survey process, which I know many companies try to do, and when we talk to each other, they say, tell me about it, you're preaching to the choir, Get, making sure that the team believes it's anonymous is key. Yes. So having this process it engages the team to say what they really think. And for me, some people don't, but for me, I'd rather know what's going on than to not know what's going on and for it to come out in some weird passive aggressive way. Right. That's what happens. So we have an affiliate. We have about, there's 10 of us, 14 of us, and uh, we will guide the team through that survey process. And then if the dentist needs more help, we have our affiliates, most are consultants who can help. That's between the doctor and the affiliate. I have nothing to do with that, but we felt it would be important not to just leave somebody out there hanging without offering some kind of support. So we do. I mean, I'm, I'm back and forth with my dentist uh, by text a lot and they feel perfectly comfortable just reaching out and saying, hey, this is going on. And then I'll say, it sounds like this, but if they need more than just that text back and forth, then we have a private Facebook group and they can also hire one of the affiliates, preferably the affiliate who helped them through the process because they got to know each other or they can go outside of the DIY. They, 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 they can do anything they want. This is such a respectful program because it puts the ball in the dentist and the dental practices court. And that's why I love it. That's how I think. And that's why it was written this way. I love that. Okay, so tell us the best way to reach you. We will, of course, put your contact information in the um, below, but please tell us the best way to reach out to you. The best way is to go to the website, www.dentaldiydentalconsulting.com, uh, because on that website, contact, you can schedule an appointment with me through Calendly, uh, you can call me, and there's so many good questions and answers 
anything you can be looking for. All of the information that you want is in the question and answer section, but there's a benefit section. What's in it for me? We always need to know that. What will happen? How will I benefit by bringing in a program like this? We explain all of that. And that is the best way to go to the website. I would agree. Your website is incredible. It's so full of so, you. Many, so much information and resource. Thank you. Um, wow. Well, is there anything else that you would love to um, relay to our audience this day? I think the important thing that I want everyone to know is how blessed DIY is to have an advisor like Linda Miles. And most people know her in the industry and she is the cream of the crop. And to have somebody like her be an advisor is just paramount. Mm -hmm. So the quality and the level is so high and the content is so rich. I think that's what people uh, really need to know. Yes, thank you. Awesome, wonderful. Well, please reach out to Nancy if you have any questions or want to get started with the DIY yourself. It's such an affordable program that will reap incredible rewards for your practice and your team. Thank you for joining us today on Influence Interviews and have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you, Laura.